Welcome to Obedience to the Law of Love, from the Unveiled Mysteries by the Ascended Master Saint Germain, Vegetarian, Part 1 of 2, on Words of Wisdom. Guy Warren Ballard was a United States mining engineer and co-founder, together with his wife, Edna Ann Wheeler Ballard, of the I Am Spiritual Movement, inspired by his life-changing meeting with the Ascending Master Saint-Germain. One morning in 1930, Mr. Ballard, led subconsciously by his inner spiritual longing, went on a hike on beautiful Mount Shasta, located in the western U.S., where, according to legend, a group of divine adepts reside or could be seen. His sincerity and deep longing for the truth led to a profound experience that day. He was blessed by the appearance of the beloved Master Saint-Germain. Following this enlightening encounter, Mr. Ballard devoted his life to spreading the Master's wisdom according to his capacity. From Master Saint-Germain's dictations and teachings, Mr. Ballard wrote a series of books under the pseudonym Godfrey Ray King. Master Saint-Germain's imparted spiritual knowledge was the basis for many lectures given by Mr. Ballard, as well as for the founding of the I Am religious activity in the early 1930s. By 1938, it had up to one million followers. Today, the volumes documenting the valuable mysteries revealed by the Ascended Master to Godfrey Ray King are still a fascinating spiritual gem for many across the globe. The three most famous volumes are titled Unveiled Mysteries, The Magic Presence and the I Am Discourses. Ascended Master Saint Germain is deeply venerated among the Theosophical Society, as he represents the establishment of the Aquarian Age, an era that we are privileged to be witnessing. He is also identified with the Count of Saint Germain, a mysterious European figure who possessed a great inner knowledge and was called immortal by some due to his everlasting youth. Today, we will read from Godfrey Ray King's book Unveiled Mysteries, as we continue with the author's journey along with Saint-Germain to an ancient civilization. It depicts a banquet event, a key moment in which the King Emperor would announce his withdrawal from his position as per instruction from a higher spiritual order, due to the people's moving away from their God-Self within. Excerpt from Chapter 2 The Sahara Desert The King gave a signal and the assembled guests were seated. In a voice majestic and powerful, he poured out an invocation from the depths of his heart to that infinite Supreme One. O Thou, mighty, omnipresent Source, Thou who dost govern the universe, the flame in each human heart, we give love, praise and gratitude unto Thee for Thine own life, light and love in all things. We adore Thee and look only unto Thee, the Presence in all things, visible and invisible, evolved and unevolved, Thou ceaselessly flowing stream of life, who dost forever pour Thyself into all creation, the One Self in all. My heart calls unto Thee as never before, to rouse these, my people, to their danger, for of late indifference to thee is creeping over them like a poisonous breath, producing a soul sleep and drawing a veil before them that shuts out thy shining presence. If they must have the experience that consumes and burns away the dross and clouds of the outer self, 
then do thou sustain, and at last bring them forth in thy eternal perfection. I call unto thee, thou creator of the universe, thou supreme, omnipotent God. The king took his seat and all waited in silent expectation. In a few moments, the service for each individual appeared before him. Course after course was served as if by unseen hands, the food coming in marvelous crystal and jeweled containers, then disappearing as soon as the course was finished, followed immediately by the succeeding one. Finally, the most elaborate banquet the Empire had ever known came to an end. All was silence again, as if in breathless expectancy, anticipating some most unusual occurrence. The king arose and stood a few moments, calmly waiting. Soon, a crystal goblet appeared at the right hand of each guest. These were filled with a condensation of pure electronic essence, and for all who drank it, no matter how far down the ages his live stream extended, or how varied his experiences, he never could completely forget the God-Self within. This sole protection was granted to those at the banquet as a reward for their faith and loyalty to the God in themselves, the King and the Empire. The counselors and those present had served sincerely and continuously for the good of the Empire and for that service, sole protection through the centuries was given to them. Each lifted his goblet and drank to the God in himself, to his own flame of the Most High Living One. The proceedings of the banquet were broadcast to everyone in the Empire through a radio similar to that which we use today. It was no larger than a dinner plate, yet powerful enough to receive what was happening at any point on the Earth's surface. After the salutation to the Divine Self in each, all became very still, the atmosphere itself seeming perfectly motionless. In a few moments, a wondrous presence slowly became visible in front of the king. That presence was a cosmic master from out the great silence. A murmur of awe and surprise passed over the assembled guests at his appearance as they recognized in amazement one of whom they had heard for many centuries, yet whose visible presence none had ever seen. Raising his right hand, he addressed those present and all dwelling within the Empire. O oh, children of Earth, I bring you a warning of serious import at a time of great crisis. Arouse yourselves from the snare of the senses that is engulfing you. Awake from your lethargy before it's too late. This my brother of light, must withdraw and leave you to the experience that you have chosen and which is slowly enticing you into its many pitfalls. You have opened yourselves to the uncontrolled ignorance and emotions of the outer self. You give little attention and still less adoration to your source, the supreme, the mighty, the radiant, the majestic, the infinite cause of all that is, the creator and sustainer of all worlds. You give no gratitude to the great, glorious presence, the Lord of love, for the very life by which you exist. Oh, why are you not even grateful for the blessings nature pours out so lavishly, for the abundance that comes to you through this fair land? and from your own wise and unselfish ruler? You thank each other for favors, the things of the senses and form that are so ephemeral that pass from one to another and then are no more. But why, oh why do you forget the source of all life, all love, 
all intelligence, all power. People, oh people, where is your gratitude to life, for love, for the magnificence of experience that you enjoy every moment, every hour, every day, year after year? All this you call your own, but it has always belonged, does now, and always will belong to the one great source of life, light, love, and all good, God, the Supreme, the Adorable, the All-Pervading One. When, by your own misuse of the energy of life, which this All-Pervading One showers upon you constantly, pure, perfect and uncontaminated, you have created conditions so destructive and painful that they can no longer be endured. You turn in either desperation, agony or rebellion and call upon God for relief from your misery. This is your offering to the giver of all good in return for that ceaseless perfection which he continually bestows in supreme love. The only condition upon which the one great self gives all is its right use, that it may bless the rest of creation with infinite joy, harmony and activity. When, in the depths of misery, you turn again to your source for relief from your misdeeds, you either cry in the agony of despair, or, if rebellious, blame life and the source of all good for allowing what you call injustice or wrong conditions to exist in you and your world. It is you, the little personal self, who are unjust to life, you who are unfair, you who create the misery of earth for only humanity because it has free will to create as it chooses, each individual through his own thought and feeling, only humanity who dares to bring into existence the discord, misery and deformity that express upon earth. This is a blight upon creation and the perfection that forever swings in the great cosmic melody of eternal song. Only mankind is guilty of making a discord in the music of the spheres, for all else lives and acts in accordance with the law of love, of life, of harmony and of light. All else blends into the harmonious whole, the body of the infinite, all-loving one. All other realms of life and light move and create according to the fundamental principle upon which all perfection rests. That principle is love. If it were not for the great selfless ones, like your ruler, the great host of ascended masters, whose very keynote of existence is love, humanity would long ago have destroyed itself and the very planet upon which it exists. The transcendent and magnificent activities of love and light are the natural conditions in which God created and expected His human children to manifest, obeying His command, to love. There is no such thing as a supernatural condition anywhere in the universe. All that is transcendent, beautiful and perfect is natural and according to the law of love. Anything other than that is subnatural. The daily experience of the host of Ascended Masters is the perfection God's children were meant to live in always. Earth's children did express this perfection once, in a former cycle, which was one golden age. That former civilization, that ancient perfection, is older than you dream, older than you believe the planet to be. All mankind at that period 
lived in a similar transcendent state as the ascended masters, and the condition of misery that has followed since that time down through the ages came about because they chose to look away from their source, love, as the plan by which to live life. For more information on the Ascended Master Saint Germain, the I Am Teachings and Godfrey Ray King's books, please visit saintgermainfoundation.org or saintgermainfoundation.ch. Harmonious viewers, we appreciate your kind presence for today's Words of Wisdom. <laughs> 